nine. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about introductions. Um, there are many ways to write a good introduction, but I was trying to figure out what the best kind of um, go-to would be for us, knowing that some of us, especially in this online learning model, would really like um, some structure, and also knowing that there are plenty of us out there who, um, while structure isn't a bad thing, we also don't want that to get in the, the way of our writerly voice, and we want some flexibility. So the one that we're going to talk about today, the upside-down triangle model, is one that should A, be familiar, because we used it for argument writing, um, B, it's going to provide structure, especially for those of you who, who like that, and C, for those of you who want more room for creativity, I think there are opportunities uh, for it. So that's really what we're going to focus on today um, as we take a look at um, using the upside down triangle model for a literary analysis. So let's go ahead and take a look. We'll give a quick refresher on what this looks like. And then I'm going to write um, a sample body paragraph for you. That one's going to be really character driven. So if you're looking at what Harper Lee did with Scout or Atticus or Arthur or Tom or whoever the character is, I'm going to kind of model how I write one like that. After that, I'm going to going to show you, uh, just to save time a little bit, I'm going to show you one that was pre-written from the sample essay uh, that I gave you a little while back that's focused more on a, a theme or a motif, a big picture idea, um, and that way you can kind of see how that came together as well, still using that upside down triangle model. So let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look here. Quick reminder here, the idea behind the upside down triangle model is to open up with something that isn't text specific. So what is it about then? What it's about is kind of the, the human condition. Remember, the great thing about literature, one of the many great things about literature, is it helps us understand ourselves. It speaks to that human condition. Um, it helps us understand the, the world around us a little bit. Um, and that's what we want to open up with. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open broad, and then we'll start to narrow by introducing this particular text, and then literally and symbolically we're going to get to the point, right? And I've been put, like pun intended, we get to the point at the end, that is your claim. But again, notice the green section here, broad idea, relatable to all, not about the stories or the characters. So in my broad opening that I'm gonna try and write for you here, um, I am not gonna mention Harper Lee. I'm not gonna mention Atticus or Scout or Tom or Boo or Aunt Alexandra. I'm going to talk about us. I'm gonna talk about what we go through. And notice those pronouns I just used intentionally. I'm gonna talk about us, we, our, those are going to be the ones that we really, really focus on because at the end of the day, um, that's what's going to be a, a hook where people are going to see themselves in this. Then in the blue section, that's where it's my job to take that broad opening and connect it to my claims. So there's going to be a gap between those. So that lead in is going to be important. That's where I go ahead and I take advantage of being able to establish Harper Lee to kill a Mockingbird, these characters, and then literally and symbolically get to the point what is uh, the point of my essay? We're actually going to start with that last one because um, we're going to work backwards a little bit. So the sample that I gave you here, this is the claim that I was working with in the sample body paragraph I wrote for you all. Um, here's, here's what I'm kind of writing on. It was about why did she create Aunt Alexandra, this character who didn't really impact the Tom Robinson trial. She didn't impact the fact that the kids were messing with Boo or even their shifting ideas on him. Um, at the end of the day, why is she there? Clearly, uh, Aunt Alexander serves a purpose, but it's not necessarily obvious. So I thought that'd be a cool thing to write on. So here's what I came up with. I'm going to set out to prove this. This is literally and symbolically my point. That Harper Lee created the character of Aunt Alexandra to, here's my why, demonstrate how traditional Southern values clashed with a more progressive vision. All right. So everything I write is coming back to Harper Lee creating this character to kind of represent the Old South and how that clashes with Atticus or even Atticus's children like Scout when it comes to gender norms. That's really going to be what I focus on here. So when we go to write our introduction, remember, I want to start broad. I don't want to start with Aunt Alexandra or Harper Lee or Scout or anything like that. So where is it that we look um, for ideas? Go to your claim. We know we are not going to use this, right? Because that's Harper Lee, that's Aunt Alexandra. So I want to look at some key words that I can pull out of the claim that are not specific to To Kill a Mockingbird, um, but that it'd be an interesting hook that speaks to that human condition a little bit. So when I look here, I'm thinking about words like clashing, right? Like I think that's going to be important, the idea of conflict. Um, 
really the idea of, of values, traditional values clashing with progressive vision. You'll notice I didn't uh, bold Southern because that's not necessarily universal. Um, but what is universal is this idea of traditional values sometimes clashing with more progressive values, right? That's something we can all wrap our heads around. So those are going to be some of the big picture ideas that um, I'm going to try and open up with. So again, I'm going to come up here. I am not going to um, I'm not going to open up with the idea of any of our particular characters. I am simply going to um, sorry, I'm simply going to try and open up with some of these core ideas. That's going to be our uh, our big picture goal here as I scoot myself back up there. All right, cool. So I want to talk about these key words, not specific to To Kill a Mockingbird yet, but we, us, our, those pronouns are going to come through. So um, maybe I open up with something like, um, as we, yeah, as we, important pronoun, um, move forward in the fight for progress. Um, there's often resistance, right? So I'm kind of getting at this idea. I never spell resistance, right? Um, I'm already kind of talking about this idea of, boom, progress is in there. I have resistance. Okay, I didn't use clash, but speaking to kind of that same thing. So I'm already kind of pulling in some of those words. This isn't quite enough, though, so I want to keep going. So as we move forward in the fight for progress, there is often resistance. Um, I talked a little bit about that human condition, so maybe I even use that, um, or maybe human nature. Um, in truth, it is human nature. Um, want to hold on to the values we grew up with. Um, however, it is also okay for um, those values to change as we learn and grow. Cool. So all human condition, right? Maybe even one more sentence here, though, because I really want to drive home this idea of conflict. So I think I'm going to try and do one more sentence here that really plays with this idea of like, clashing, um, conflict, something like that. So um, yeah, I'm a little stuck, but I just want to keep coming back to those bold words. So um, this is not always easy, of course, as um, These competing ideas can often lead to conflicts, um, both within ourselves and with others. Cool. So now I feel like I've really hit this idea of traditional values clashing with progressive visions. Um, and I'll, I even try to get in this idea of within ourselves, which I think is true, and with others. This is going to be kind of my, my link um, then to Aunt Alexandra. So I think this is plenty. Um, at this point, I think people are, are on board with this human condition. So now I've got a job to do. These things alone feel like there's a gap there. And there is. That's what the lead-in is for. So I have this idea of different values, right? I've got Aunt Alexandra. I've got to find a way to link those. Let's go ahead and take a look. And I'm going to go ahead and just establish my author and, and book um, right here. So I'll do something like um, this struggle. So that struggle I just talked about, right? Um, the struggle, or I could even pull in this word conflict. Um, this conflict, that way I'm really pulling these together. This conflict between progress and old world uh, views is captured in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. All right, cool. So now I've established my author, I've established the book, and I used this section 
to talk about my green section and have it start to lead into this particular book. Now, still a little bit of a gap here because I'm focused on Auntie Alexandra. I haven't even mentioned her yet. So I think I need at least one more sentence, maybe even two, um, to really drive home this idea of conflict and um, clashing values, but specific to Aunt Alexandra. And so that's going to mean Atticus needs to be part of this. So maybe I'll do something like um, specifically um, this clashing, pulling in keywords, comes through between two key characters. Atticus Finch and his sister, Alexandra. I, I think that actually kind of works. I'm going to blend this together and see how that reads. So did I do a good enough job of tradition, values clashing, progressive vision? I think I've got that in my green. And then this conflict that I talked about in my green, this conflict, is ooh, captured, proofreading, in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. Specifically, this clashing comes through between two key characters, Atticus Finch and his sister, Alexandra. All right, cool. I actually think this works. Maybe I could push that blue section a little bit more when I go back to do some extra editing. Maybe I want to bring in the fact that she clashes with Scout a little bit too. But I think that kind of falls under my Atticus umbrella, um, knowing that Scout, of course, is Atticus's kid. I think I'm going to let it be for now. So I've got my three sections. I've got my broad opening where if I delete this, we don't even know what book it is. Then we add in our blue section. This conflict that I just talked about in the green section, we see in To Kill a Mockingbird, I establish who my character is. And then literally and symbolically, here is my point. Cool. I like how that came together. And you'll notice. I ended up with three sentences here, two sentences here, one there. Don't get caught up in the actual numbers, although three, two, one kind of works out well. Um, doesn't have to be. Um, this could be two to four sentences. This could be two to four sentences. The claim, of course, we probably want to get down to one sentence, but I, I like how that came together. I'm, I'm happy with that overall. So let's take a look at another one that's not character specific. This one was in the sample essay I wrote for you. Um, let's take a quick look at it. All right, so this one really takes a look at this idea of um, fear. That's that's the big theme that we um, that we have here. Sorry, I know I'm kind of throwing my image around here, but I got to get back to doing some color coding. Um, so this is really kind of the, the core idea. I'm going to, I'm going to bold that. Um, I think that that's, that's really kind of the core idea here is that Harper Lee is using characters in the novel as a device to show how fear moves through and affects us all. And I love, or all of us. And I love those collective pronouns again. I think that's a super smart move that this writer made. So as you take a look at the claim, what is the key word that they're really focused on? At the end of the day, it's it's fear, right? Um, that's going to be our key word here. Fear, all of us, how it affects all of us maybe would be a good one. So this is now going to be that idea of what do you pull out and bring to the top? Take fear, whoop, open up there. So let's see how this particular writer did it. You'll notice that these first few sentences are really, really focused on um, that concept of fear. And I love that this writer talks about that it's a complex human emotion, right? That collective thing, every person. So we're thinking about that collective. It can make us think faster or it can completely send us into panic. So doing such a great job here, um, all of us are faced by fear. What a great job here with the, the green as far as kind of that, um, that collective, right? Like great, great example of that taking place. So then our next section here becomes that lead in because if we take that away, 
we've got a gap. So we need to go ahead and insert something specific to To Kill Mockingbird. So this, everything they just talked about, this is the same for the characters in Harper Lee's classic novel To Kill Mockingbird. Whether it's the children speeding past the spooky house on the street when they walk by it, or Mayella testifying against an innocent black man for fear of losing her reputation, Harper Lee uses the characters in the novel as devices to show how fear moves through uh, and affects all of us. It's a really, really good intro that a student wrote a couple years ago. And again, we've got our green, we've got our blue, we've got our red. But beyond the color combination, what we have is core idea of fear pulled up to the top, discussed in detail here, and then this, everything they just established, is what we saw in To Kill a Mockingbird, and then we lead into that claim. So you've got two really, really good examples here um, of pulling a key idea out and bringing that up to the top. In this example, it was fear. In the one that I wrote for you, it was the idea of like clashing values. Either way, you're taking that key idea and pulling that up to the top. So your job is to figure out what is that keyword or what are those keywords that you want to go ahead and bring all the way up to the top. So that is your task this week as you finalize your body paragraphs and then you bring your introduction uh, up to the top and you start working there. Of course, we'll also talk conclusions. We'll do that in a separate video, um, but that's your challenge this week. Now, if you are looking at your claim and you are stuck, you are stumped, you are not sure where to go, please remember, you have email opportunities, you have the Remind app to reach out to me. You also have office hours every single day this week uh, from 9.30 to 11. I'd love to see you sign up for one of those time slots. I would love to brainstorm with you um, and kind of work on this together. So look at your schedule, make a plan, maybe even sign up for something today. Um, you know, for later in the week, something that works for you. So looking forward to working on these introductions with you um, and seeing how they come together. Best of luck. Happy writing.